My name is Stefan Rose. I'm a photographer and videographer and poet, but I have been concentrating primarily on large format photography. Well, I, I was interested in dry cleaner architecture because I find that it's often a very overlooked form of architecture, or that the buildings themselves are involved in a very transitory interchange with the general public. People tend to just drive by, by those locations, and then only when they need something cleaned do they go in. So there's a very short-term interaction between the consumers of the dry cleaning services. And I thought it was interesting because uh, the, f the photographs are examining the architecture and I've uh, deliberately eliminated people from the scene. So I've left the sort of space around the buildings uh, empty of people. And I was interested in doing that because, partly because the uh, of that transitory nature of the interchange, but also because dry cleaner buildings are starting to close down. And in the Kitchener-Waterloo area in the past three years, there have been uh, five dry cleaners that I know of that have closed up shop at certain locations. And I thought it would be a shame that this, the buildings or the architecture uh, would disappear from memory, that they would only be associated perhaps with the 20th century and that they would sort of slowly disappear without having a record of. Um, the camera is a 1927 Corona banquet or panoramic view camera and it takes a sheet of film that is 8 by 20 inches in size and I was interested in using this size of film uh, for the kinds of quality of the image that it can capture because in contrast to digital photography there the image is made up of so many uh, dots or color pixels whereas with the film it's using a chemical process that has such fine detail that you get hundreds or well you get millions and millions of pixels worth of information on that sheet of film so the the quality is so much greater than digital and so I was interested in having the almost an excess of detail, or capturing every detail with clarity so that when I make the photographs, I'm actually placing that big sheet of film. I mean, it's a big 8 by 20 inch sheet, and I'm placing it on the photographic paper, shining the light through so there's a one-to-one, -one, uh, you could call it a veracity of the, uh, the image. Or there isn't necessarily a particular architecture for dry cleaner buildings. But some of the similarities that I found were that a lot of the dry cleaners were located at intersections. So they would have, uh, you know, they would give their clients the possibility of driving up at that corner and being able to quickly pick up their uh, dry cleaning or drop off their dirty shirts or whatever, you know, very quickly from multiple directions. Um, another similarity was that uh, uh, the signs on the buildings have a very similar type of font. It's a very clean sans serif font and uh, that seems to be, you know, to give that clarity for the passerby so that they can easily, quickly read the sign and know what the function of that building is. Um, I have a great deal of fondness for the dry cleaner buildings. I think there's uh, something about them because they are overlooked. And I thought it was nice to be able to bring those buildings into the forefront to place them in the, in the public view as a series so that you can't ignore the fact that they are there and there are so many different types of them and you know there's something unique and distinctive about the locations that they're in or there's something happening in the landscape around them and i really wanted to uh, you know emphasize what happens in the environment around them as well how that's changing <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.